Well, hello, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of the Working Musicians Podcast. I am your host, Dreis Organica, and I am an animal. Ha <laughs> ha. Like to thank Smith and Forge for their 6% alcohol by volume hard apple cider offering. And today, I'm going to talk about. Mm, I know. So today's headline will be So you want to be a musician, huh? Well, okay. Uh. Yeah, so about that. Uh, Guys, I got to tell you, it's been one interesting uh, month and kind of been a little slow to get these podcasts out. Although, by the time you're hearing this podcast, this is, I mean, hell, uh, during the month of May, I kind of got a little bit behind. Or maybe it was January, March, April. April, I really got behind and I'm I'm kicking it back into gear starting now. It's May. But you won't be hearing this episode so till God knows when, because I try to keep three or four, maybe even five for all I know, kind of in the can, but I got to get around to editing these things so that you can actually stand to listen to them. Because, uh, yeah, contrary to popular belief, uh, I have a tendency to get off topic and stutter, make some lip smacks and all kinds of unpleasantries that make listening to this not very, uh, very pleasing. So... I may edit that out, but I doubt it. That's just good radio. Uh, So, 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 so. What am I going to talk about today? So you want to be a musician. Well, this was something I've been talking about to some people for a while. And it's one of those things where, you know, if I had to start all back over again, I don't know if I could. I think that being a musician is not for everybody, and I think it takes a select kind of individual to be able to just put up with it and everything that goes with it, right? But there's a good chance if you're listening to this, you probably are a musician. So perhaps I'm speaking to the choir. But I think it's definitely some good food for thought as to why do you want to be a musician? Okay, so you want to be a musician? Well, what does that mean? What do you got to do? Who do you got to be? All these kinds of things. What does it take to be a musician? Right? These seem kind of simple. And I think if we were, if you were to have to actually get in front of people and talk to you about why you're a musician, you'd have a hard time explaining it. Right? So I'm going to do my best to explain why you want to be a musician. And I have this strange suspicion that after I'm done, if you were to only have known what music was based on my description and what it means to be a musician, you probably won't want to be, because I'm that pessimistic. All right. So, if you're thinking to yourself one day, you know what would be nice? I'd like to learn how to play an instrument. That seems like a good pastime, you know? I think that's a, a category that a lot of people fall into. They feel like, you know, I need to get a hobby, right? I need something to do to take my mind off of things. I, I feel like there's a void in my life, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's the way a lot of people feel. And, you know, they take up all kinds of arts and crafts and hobbies just to kind of give them something to think about outside of their daily grind, right? But something I've noticed is that eh, starting out and trying to become a musician and being one are two very different things. And when I say if I would have to start things all over again, I don't know that I would or could. And here's why. I started out my musical venture as a typical adolescent. You know, I'm in school and somebody, you know, at some point you got to figure out what artistic class you want to take in school. And you've got choices like theater, lame, choir, extra lame. No offense to all you choir and theater people, but that's just my take on things when I was that age. Disclaimer, now over. Or you can join the band, lame, or be an art student, which seems cool, except for if you suck at art, like drawing and stuff, and don't have any patience for that kind of crap, 
and that's probably not where you want to be. So what did I do? I chose the most expensive option, largely because a lot of my friends were doing it, and you got to try out, and it was like, okay, cool. I had no idea up until just now that I wanted to play the trombone, but I've got a lot of friends doing it. They're going to join the band. I want to be in the same classroom with my friends, so I'm going to go try out, and because of the size of my lips, uh, this might not be as big a surprise, but I've got a fairly large mouth. Not tuba large. You know, I don't, ha- I don't have tuba lips, for whatever that, whatever that means. But apparently I have a good embouchure for the trombone. Says my half-effeminate, f- soon-to-be band director. Although I think he was from, like, Russia or something. He, he spoke some very strange English. And had a very nasty temper. Although I don't blame him. There's nothing harder than listening to a bunch of 12-year-olds suffer through hot cross buns on a brass instrument, right? So here I am, I'm guessing I'm probably 12 years old. You know, hey, Ma, I need a trombone. How much does that cost? I don't know, 1000 bucks. Oh, God! So here we're at the local pawn shop, and you find some dented wonder. You know, you get to your first day of class, and everybody's got these nice, shiny instruments. And I've got some rental that I think I don't even know if trombones were invented, but this, this thing was so old. I'm like, I, I didn't know trombones were around 400 years ago. But here I stand with a, a trombone, and we were talking about a nice, smooth writing slide. Oh, God, you had to like, you, you didn't just play this instrument. You had to be careful because you had to like grab the thing with a full fist. And when you meant to move it from one spot to another, oh, you didn't just accidentally do this. This was a, this was a forced effort. This is something you do on purpose, and it takes great pains. And the worst thing is when you've got your arm all the way extended out, and then you have to come up to the very beginning, and you end up smashing the slide into the front of the instrument. It causes you to smash your teeth up against the mouthpiece. Oh, man. How I couldn't recommend that enough to enough people. But that's how I started in music. You know, you could say, oh, well, you know, I sang some gospel music, this, that, and the other thing. You know, if, if for the few of you who know who I am, you, you know I came up from a very gospely kind of family. Hell, I didn't have, I didn't know what TV was until I was like ten. You know, and then when I did, it's like, all right, Ninja Turtles is the most awesomest thing ever. And it, since then, I've been on a straight path to hell. Thank you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I, because of you, I'm now going to hell. And so that's how I got my start playing music on an instrument that. Up until three minutes before trying out for the uh, middle school band, you know, I had no idea that I would ever want to play a trombone, right? But why not, you know? Let's check it out. In some ways, it turned out to be one of the best decisions of my life, I would say. Maybe not the best, but a very good decision. But I would have never in a million years up until that point guessed that I would be playing trombone and that would lead to other things, right? So I think it's one of those things where like, oh, so you want to be a musician, huh? Really? Well, okay. Get an instrument and start learning. All right. Now, I started off playing in the the school band on the trombone. Now, I still have the thing. It's up in an attic. I think it's 200 degrees up there in the great state of Texas right now. Because that's how we roll. We like it to be 200 degrees. And uh, I haven't played that thing in years. Once in a blue moon, I'll bust it out just to see how bad I suck. And it's like, yep, still suck. But at one point, I was pretty darn good at that thing until something else happened. Probably about freshman or so year of high school, I picked up a guitar. And let's just say um, I stopped playing trombone quite as much once I learned how to kind of start playing around on the guitar. Because it was the trombone that fueled my passion for music. It was after playing that for a few years, I realized, hey, I can actually, I have some musical gifts. You know, I have the ability to play music. I wasn't like a virtuoso trombone player, but, you know, I managed to make it to some state kind of things. And perhaps if I would have pursued it and wasn't such a hooligan in school, I could have gotten a nice scholarship to some school to play a trombone in a, in a band playing music I don't really like, right? But I did kind of learn a lot from playing that. And that's a unique experience that a lot of people don't have. And not to say you absolutely have to have that to learn an instrument and to enjoy it, 
but it's kind of hard to uh, replace those fundamentals you learn from going up and down scales, practicing rhythm, sight reading music, all kinds of things, that, learning the theory and how to read music, understanding all that stuff behind it, right? So by the time I'd learned, it wasn't so hard for me to learn how to play a guitar because I'd already learned one instrument. I knew what I was in for and I was ready for the challenge, which is something that I think most people are not ready for. Uh, contrary to popular belief, playing a real musical instrument is not the same as playing Guitar Hero. Not even close. Uh, you know, 10 people can have the exact same instrument and you'll have 10 very, very different sounds coming out of it. It's, it's absolutely amazing. You would think that that wouldn't be the case. I mean, heck, you can get somebody on an electric-based instrument, like an electric guitar, and I tell you, the sound that'll come out of it is, can be very different from one person to the next. And I think that a lot of people, after they start fiddling around with it for about a month, they give up. The truth is, you have to struggle through it. And it takes about a year. I mean, give or take, if you practice a lot more, maybe if you take some lessons. But if you're passionate about it, by the time you've gotten a year in, you can actually start noodling around and playing, you know, whatever, whatever instrument it is. But it's going to take some practice because at the end of the day, guys, this is all muscle memory, right? So I, I think a mistake I see other people making, myself included, is hey, I can't play this particular whatever. Uh, that's fine. You know, so you play it over and over and over again. And you can't get it. And by the end, you're so frustrated, right? Why can't I play this? Well, because your muscles haven't learned how to play it yet, right? Your mind and body have to work together. And that takes practice. You don't just uh, shoot a basketball all day and then expect to be a, a master by the end of it. No, you'll notice by the next day, huh, I still can't play this, but it seems like I've gotten better. And that's one thing that I think people just need to realize. When you first start picking up an instrument, um, you're not going to be good. It's going to take a lot of effort. But I think there are some smart things you can do to help make that not so, so much of a, uh, a futile effort. One of them being is practice, set a time limit, especially if you don't enjoy it. Do your thing. All right? If you're trying to learn how to play something, that's a great way to go because once you learn the fundamentals of how to hold the instrument, how, to, how it's supposed to be played, you know, start trying to play a song after a little while. And of course, you're not going to be able to play it worth a damn. And it's going to sound awful and you're going to be frustrated. But at the point that you're ready to just give up completely, stop playing. Come back in a day or two. And I'm willing to bet you'll find that, hey, you're a lot closer to being able to play it than you were the day before. And I think that's the thing that, I, that, that fuels musicians is I'm getting better every day. All right, this was hard, but now, I, you know, now it's a little bit easier. Then after you kind of noodle around on something for a month, especially when you first start, hey, I can actually play it. It's not like great. Nobody really wants to hear it, but I can actually play it now. I'm getting there. And you just keep on struggling. And after about a year, I'm not going to say you're going to be good. I'm not saying you should be joining a band. I'm not saying any of that stuff. But what I'm saying is, after about a year's time, you've put in enough effort to really start learning the instrument. Because you've kind of, assuming you've done the right kind of practice, and you've actually taken it somewhat seriously while still enjoying it, which is another thing. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, stop. Because you won't, you won't continue. I mean, it's not like I got to tell you. If you don't enjoy it and you completely hate it because you hate the challenge of it, then you're not going to do it. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to challenge you, and it's going to challenge you every time you play. Because uh, something that not everyone tells you is playing an instrument isn't really a leisurely activity. I mean, it can be, but it's it's exercise. I mean, it's physical. Like I play the guitar, and let me tell you. Sure, I can play a pretty good amount of time now, but when I first started, my fingers felt like, like terrible. They were on fire, like I would get cuts and crazy things. Sure, I've built up my calluses, so you could say, but even to this day, like after a while of playing, my fingers hurt, but you just kind of get used to it and you kind of get over it. And at the point that you're playing on a daily basis, is first, especially when you first start out, it's painful. Moving your fingers and stretching them in that manner in uncomfortable positions. It's very painful. Now, part of the reason why I think it's painful is because you don't know how to play the instrument. You've got terrible technique, but that's, that's another topic for another time, right? But I think that's something that most people don't really pick up on at first is playing an instrument is painful to an extent. In fact, to a large extent, and forgive me if I'm not being politically correct here, but I think there is a reason why a lot of women don't play guitar 
why a lot of women don't play drums or any of these instruments that really take a that really put a beating on your body in some way shape or form to be able to play because it's painful and that's i think in, you know especially in american society that's not the way that most girls are raised and therefore that's why you don't find a whole lot of women playing you know instruments like like guitar bass drums clearly they're out there and that doesn't mean they're all like butch but if for whatever reason it's not i think it's pretty obvious i don't have sound science behind me but hey i've been to the guitar center a few times and don't see a whole lot of females in there and it's not too hard to understand the reason why it's painful takes a lot of time and it hurts honestly playing a guitar can be very painful carpal tunnel all this stuff it can happen so you still want to play huh <laughs> after what i've told you it still sounds like a fun endeavor okay well let's keep on going so i think the reason why a lot of people want to play is because to play some kind of an instrument is because they, they feel like music is important to them. They, they feel that, that, that feeling you get in your stomach. They feel some sense of euphoria, or they, they really seem to connect to music. And that's not something that everyone does, right? And you'll, hey, maybe it's, I think it's a pretty good rule of thumb. The more so that a person con connects with music and identifies with musicians and, and just the overall balance of how things hit, they hit them, their ears, you know, for whatever reason, music has a different influence and impact on me than it does on other people. And not to say that it has more of an impact. I've heard people that seem like music is my life and everything. And I hear them play their instruments and they're not very good at all. And it's just kind of like, odd. how can you be so passionate about music yet so terrible at playing music or writing music? And that, that's something I kind of I, I can't entirely explain. There's always going to be people who are just naturally better at picking up instruments. They ha might have a naturally better ear. But I also think that it has something to do with how people go about learning new things. And there are some people who really need a teacher. And those people, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But they tend to not be very good songwriters. They can be very good players, and they, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And but their viewpoint on music versus a songwriter's are very different. So I think there's really two main types of musicians. You've got you've got performers, and then you've got artists, and they're two very different things. Like it's one thing to be enjoy, you know, drawing pictures of stuff that you see, or you know, going out to a, a pretty scene and painting a nice picture. That's, that's nice. I mean, clearly, the people would say that's an artist. And not to say that that's not the same case with music. Learning how to play other people's music, that can be a lot of fun. And there's a lot of artistry that you learn to it that will help you become a better songwriter. But it seems like there's a lot of people who do that, but they're not really interested in writing music. And then when you do hear them attempt to write music, it's just, hmm. It's like you get, it just seems like either they're, that part of their brain is just very underdeveloped or they just don't have that sort of knack for it. So I think people need to have a good understanding of what they intend to accomplish as a musician. And I I've, I've might, might have made mention of this before. If your goal is to be able to play an acoustic guitar so that you can play in your church group or sing, sing around the campfire you know your your motives are very different than perhaps mine right i like for me don't get me wrong i've been there i've done that that might have been my purpose in learning the instrument but after a while i started wanting to make my own music i wanted to find my own vo voice in music i always love certain things that you feel when you hear good music but hearing it and playing it are two different things like it is hard to, once you get to a certain skill set, it is so hard to listen to bad music. It is so hard to listen to bad musicianship because you want it to be good. You want it to be at a certain level. You want to feel it, you know, and not to say that it has to be crisp and super clean, but you really want to feel what that, that musician or that artist is, is really trying to portray. And when you don't, it's very frustrating because if you've ever played an instrument 
and you've really your mind body and soul are just connecting all at the same time it's a very hard thing to replicate in other avenues of your life and i think that that is the main thing that drives musicians forward to keep going is because it's just this awe-inspiring thing like look what i can do you give me six strings and a chunk of wood and i make music right and that's great. I mean, that, that's a wonderful thing. But not to say that one person's opinion is, is greater or more, uh, is worth more than another's necessarily. But geez, I sure hear a lot of people making music and playing music. And it's just obvious to me that they don't get it like I do. And perhaps there's other people saying, yeah, Dreist, yeah, clearly you don't get it like I do because, you know, I'm just. You're just not at that level with it. And, you know, there are people out there who I say definitely have a connection with the artistry of music that I don't have. And I probably never will have. Maybe it's because I don't have that, that gift or that whatever it is, that drive. Or perhaps it's because it's just not all life consuming to me, like it is for some people. And I've met those people where their whole life is devoted to music. I mean, the, the only thing they have going on for them is their music. Right, whether it's as a performer or as an artist, and I mean, you've seen them before the starving artist or the starving musician, you know, they're out there and that is their life. And I tell you, there are some very, very good, awe inspiring people who just create tremendous artworks or just have this amazing talent. But outside of that, they don't have a whole lot. And so, if you want to be a good musician, realize you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices to be the best player on your instrument that, that you can possibly be. And so that's why most people aren't virtuosos. A, you know, maybe they don't have the natural talent that it requires, but I tell you, there's people out there that have a lot of God-given talent that they never fully utilize because it's not important to them. The person who works the hardest gets the farthest when it comes to being a musician. But the problem is, life doesn't always uh, make that easy. You know, I wish I could say, yeah, you know, I practice every day. There was a point when I, I did that, you know, now that I've been playing guitar for, God, I don't know, 15 years. Yeah, 15 years, I think. Actually, a little longer than 15 years I've been playing. It's 2000. I've been playing for 16 or 16 or 17 years. And, you know, at some point, I stopped practicing every day. There was a period of my life where I probably played once every six months, you know, but I always come back to it, right? And I think that's something that you have to, that a, a true musician is going to keep up with because no matter how hard times get, no matter how cramped my house is or living environment, I don't sell my guitars. I don't sell my amp. I've got an amp that's had a blown fuse and I suspect it's, it needs some new tubes. Eh, my Marshall JCM 2000, it's, had a, it's been like this for going on 10 years. You know, I haven't played through that thing in a good 10 years, but you know what? I still have it, and I've moved probably eight times in those 10 years, and I, I bring that amp with me everywhere I go because at some point in my mind, I'm going to be playing through it again, right? It's going to be a great thing to have. Heck, that's a 15-year-old amp. It's going to be vintage at some point, right? <laughs> I don't know about that, but you know, in my mind, it's like, I can't get rid of that. That's, that tells a, that's a part of my life. My, that amp and I have been through so much together. You know, and you start to realize that you become so emotionally connected to the instruments and the gear you play. The thing that's ridiculous about me keeping that amp is I don't even play electric guitar. I could probably count the number of times I played electric guitar on one hand in the last two years, right? That's how often I play electric guitar. I primarily play acoustic. But even then, how often do I play? Very, very seldomly, you know? Now, don't get me wrong. When I, oh, I play. Yeah, you know, a lot of, but nowadays it's kind of like, hey, I've got 30 minutes to kill and I need to keep the kids entertained before we go off somewhere. So let me bust out the guitar and they, they really seem to enjoy it. All right. But that's just a little bit about me. But I think a lot of people can kind of identify with that. Sure. There was a point in my life where I played all the time, hours on end. I can't tell you how many times I played three, four hours almost straight, you know, maybe stopping to go grab a cigarette or get a, get a beer or something like that. But, 
you know, my, my teens and young 20s, I, I used to play all the time. I wrote so much music. I got so far, you know, as far as learning the instrument. And then at some point, it's not to say that, you know, music became less important, less important. Music became, it didn't, it didn't become less important. It's just other elements of my life started taking more time and more priority. And it got to a point where like, gosh, I'm in college, I work full-time, I work full-time, I've got a wife, I really don't have time to do this. My, I mean, play my instrument, much less play in bands, you know? So that kind of, that part of your dream just sort of goes away. And I think that a lot of people will play for a few years and they kind of stop. At some point, they just stop. Now, some people never really get back on it. Some people do, but it's not, not the same, right? But I think if you are truly passionate about what you do and and playing an instrument and it's therapeutic to you you will come back to it and i and i tell you there are some times where just like being able to play an instrument is better than going to therapy like i mean i don't i don't have the need to vent a whole lot of stuff about my life if as long as i've got my instrument you know as long as i can play guitar or sing in the car you know, I've got an avenue to vent and to take out my frustrations. And that's, to me, I think, a form of expression and communication. And I think a lot of people are not very good at expressing themselves. And so when they find a hold of music, uh, it gives them a channel and an outlet to express themselves. But it also makes them very vulnerable. So that's, that's part of the thing you have to think about when you're a musician is the better you, uh, of a musician you are, the more vulnerable you become. because you have to put so much of your heart and soul into it. And if it's not too hard to go on YouTube. And for whatever reason, I think piano players or pianists, I have to say piano players first, because otherwise if I just say pianist, it sounds funny. But I've, I've noticed a lot of times you get this, what I call the nerdy white pianist. They, you know, they, they took lessons, they played as a kid, right? And they're playing some song and they're singing along to it and playing it. And while note for note, it's correct. They're on rhythm. They're playing the right notes. They're in tune. But it's like it has no soul to it. It's because they, they are unwilling to take that risk and be vulnerable in their music and to put their, their heart out and to really make it obvious that I am really trying. I really want people listening to feel this. And I kind of wonder how people can play an instrument and not put themselves into it, not be vulnerable. because. It's just boring. Then again, maybe that's who they are. Maybe that's their personality. But I tell you, I mean, all the musicians that most of us really and truly appreciate, it's not surprising that they have sometimes psychological uh, issues or drug habits or other major problems because that's their way of communicating and that they really put themselves out there. And so for a lot of people, when you say you don't like their music, you might as well just tell them that you hate them as a person, right? And I think as a songwriter and as a musician, that's a very hard thing to take as criticism and not just be totally offended and hurt by it. And I tell you, there's, there's nothing more gratifying than getting out and playing, musician, uh, playing music and doing great, whether it's in front of people or by yourself. And there's also nothing more just you know heart-wrenching than trying to play and just doing a terrible job. There are just some times... I do not have like the psychological energy to play my instrument. And the longer I've played, the more I notice that I've got to have not just a f- amount of a certain amount of physical energy, but I've got to have a certain amount of mental energy to really be able to play. And there's a lot of times I kind of play and I doodle along, but I'm just I'm just moving my fingers around and hitting strings. I'm not actually playing. Now, <laughs> Let, let me give me a little time to unwind, right? And where I've got, I'm in a, in a good mood. My body feels good. My mind is clear. And I've got that like artistic kind of like spirit about me. And I'm, I'm really passionate about, look, I'm playing my, I'm playing my guitar and I'm singing along. Um, it is just, it is just absolutely therapeutic and magical. And unfortunately, not very many of us get to that point in their lives because we quit. We don't have the patience for it. We're too afraid to put ourselves out there. Uh, we're just, I mean, and that's the funny thing. It's not even to other people. It's to yourself. People, I really think, are afraid 
to expose who they are. And that's something that as a musician, you have to get over because no matter what you're playing, you're putting yourself out there, right? And coming back to the two different types of musicians where you've got the performers and then you've got the artists, right? I mean, every artist is a performer. Every performer is an artist to an extent, but they're different sides of the coin. And let me kind of further explain that. A truly gifted performer who is clearly just all the way, no way, shape, or form, are they uh, an artistic? Are they a songwriter? They are a performer. They can take anyone else's music. They can kind of in their mind and body kind of capture what they're trying to, what that writer was going for and emulate it, right? And some of these people really do great work. And you find this a lot, and what I would say in kind of like your symphony arrangements, your more classical, like your your uh, people like, for example, the trombone players in the band, because somebody who's like a, viol- a violinist or a trombone player or something like that, I mean, it's it's just different. You came up about it more than likely in a very different way than a guitar player did, or a, a, perhaps a, an untrained pianist did. Right or a jazz musician, a classically trained musician, they know the theory. It's it's more of a science to them, and they realize, hey, it says this here. That means I need to add some passion to it, or hey, I need to kind of phrase it because it's got kind of a a sad, melancholic sound to it. That's what it's going for. This is very brisk and hyper and energetic, you know. So I need to play this very staccato and make it this certain way. They're able to take direction from the music, from a composer, from the notation on the music. And transform it in a way that is beautiful, and that it's the way the the writer or composer intended it for it to be. And that's a wonderful skill set. There is nothing wrong with that. It's a very highly valuable uh, skill to have, and especially if you're good at it, because you will always find work. But there's a part of me that wonders: is is what drives them the same that drives me? And the more I think about it, clearly not. Because my goal is not to be the best instrumentalist possible. My goal really is selfish. I want to make music that I appreciate. I want to play music that I appreciate, that I feel. I want to get something out of this, right? And I think a, uh, so, you know, somebody who's like a, a more of a performer, they're more of like the, the fitness person that really likes to push themselves because that's the business they're in, you know, hey, push your, that's like the personal trainer who does it because that's their living, right? It's not that they don't enjoy it to some extent, they get something out of it, but their goal is to get big, is to have a, look at these abs, you know, some people think, oh, I want to get a six pack, well, I got a 15 pack, look at this, right? That's kind of more so along how a, a, I would say a more of a instrumentalist, a performer's mind is geared, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, I'm not trying to make light of it just because that's not how I am. I'm more of the person who, yes, I enjoy doing fitness and I enjoy being fit because I like to feel good, right? Not because I'm out there trying to press myself or I have some kind of an expectation or a goal of, I want to have biceps that are this many inches around. I want to be able to bench press this much weight. You know, that's not my goal. I just want to look and feel good. That's my goal, right? And that's the same thing with music. I want to sound good. I want to get something out of it, and more importantly, I want to feel good when I'm playing. All right, is that kind of a is that kind of an earful for for some of y'all? You know, I'm sure that I'm speaking to the choir for some of y'all, for the few people who are currently listening, and hopefully for the millions who will be listening in the future. Uh, you know, hey, I think most artists do it for themselves to a certain point, and that's where you know perhaps it gets hard. Where once you do start to gain some notoriety. And you do have an audience and people who have expectations of you, they want to hear a certain thing, right? It's like, but they, it's like people want to see you grow as an artist, but then they don't always want to give you the space to grow. It's like, no, I want you to grow, but I want you to keep doing this. I want you to keep doing this. And that, that's where it can be very, very difficult as an artist is because you have to break through and reinvent yourself constantly. And so... Hey, you want to be a musician, right? Well, what kind of a musician do you want to be? And that's the kind of thing I think people, they, they get as far as they want to go. And not to say sadly, but the truth is most people don't get very far on their instruments because that's not their goal. 
And there is nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But realize that when you do hear that guy playing their instrument and they are truly good, or at least they are very good at portraying a level of feeling and emotion when you and the audience get something out of it, the only reason there's a good chance that the performer is getting something out of it too. So you have to have it go both ways. It's not like you're just being completely selfish. Yet at the same time, respect that because that didn't happen overnight. And when you see somebody, or more importantly, hear somebody that's playing something that is truly, truly good, realize that that is a value that they have just given to your life. And more than likely, you have not paid for it. Because the truth is, people don't value music, and they really don't value musicians. The only people who really value music tend to be musicians. Like, for the most part, you get out there and you start listening to new artists. It's kind of funny how it works. You generally get discovered by other musicians. <laughs> it's, it's the strangest thing. Take things like Reverb Nation, for example, which I'm a huge fan of. I think it is awesome. And if you would like to sponsor me, that is great. You know, you can get my contact information on workingmusicians.wordpress.com. And when it becomes feasible for me to actually pay $20 a year to make a real website address, then you can do it to workingmusicians.com. But until then, it will be workingmusicians.wordpress.com because uh, I'm not asking for anything, but I'm sure as hell not going to pay anything, right? You already get my time for free. But the truth is, people don't value music on a monetary kind of a thing. Uh, sort of a, a feeling. It's like it's not something that most people are really willing to pay for. They're willing to be entertained. Though they're willing to pay for that. Oh, they'll pay tons of money to go see a band that's really cool in concert. But they're not buying their albums. They're not supporting them like that. That's that's kind of a, a, a kind of a thing that's sort of gone away. I think it's starting to come back. We're seeing things like Kickstarter really start to take off. Uh, I think there's another website like called Patronage. And that's awesome. That is great. It's basically ways to say, hey, I appreciate what you do. I want you to keep doing it because there needs to be more people like you doing this. And the only way that people can do that is if they can make a living at it. Which brings me to this. So you want to be a musician? And you want to eat? What? You can't have it both ways. You're either, uh, you're either an artist or you eat. Ever wonder why so many musicians and artists are skinny? It's because they're dirt poor. You don't become a musician with some expectation of making a lot of money. You tend to do it because either you can't do anything else or you can't live any other way. Um, I'm neither of those people. I ha I'm very comfortable with my 60-hour-a-week job. I am very comfortable with my bills being paid. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with making music more of a hobby and not a lifestyle choice. But sometimes I regret it. Absolutely. Sometimes you regret not taking your musical ambitions further. And that's, that's something you have to be cognizant of. Is, you know, the world doesn't make time for you to do music. You do. So if you want to be a musician, you've got to, you've got to start now. You've got to think about it. You've got to stop researching. You've just got to get out there and do it. If just kind of like uh, here recently, you know, the missus and I said, you know what, we're going to get in shape. We're going to be healthy people and we're going to live long, productive lives and, and feel good all the way throughout our lives, right? So you start one bit at a time. So we started eating paleo. And it, for those who know me and see that I, I have this very stringent paleo diet, it's kind of like, what? How does this redneck end up doing this? Because, I mean, if you were to see me in real life, I am in no way, shape, or form a hippie by any means. I mean, I'm the kind of guy who mows his own lawn. I fix my cars, you know? You'll see me running around in, in Wranglers and work boots. I mean, it's, it's a trip, right? Yet, you hear me play guitar and sing, and you'd never guess, right? But the truth is, you know, you have to reinvent yourself. And I forgot what I was talking about. So I'm going to hit the stop button, go back, because I was going, had somewhere I was going. Oh, I remember now. You have to make time for this. So I was going on a, time about, like, on a tangent about how you'd never guess that I'm the, some paleo-eating bush hippie 
but apparently I am, I guess, on that when it comes to that. But it's not because I want to put out the vibe that I'm some I'm better than you because I eat healthy. No, I want to feel good and I want to be a good example and role model to my kids because that's important to me. Just like it's also important, you know, to get in shape and look good and that kind of thing, not just for myself, but to be a good role model for my family, to my wife. You know, I don't want her to be, live the rest of her life with a slob. You know what I mean? So I brush my teeth every morning, all that good stuff, right? But the same kind of mindset applies to being a musician. There's a million and one things that, that will get in your way. And there's a million and one things that will take time away from your hobby, your passion. But you can't worry about that. You just have to do it. You just have to say to yourself, I'm going to make the time and I'm going to do it. And it's amazing. If you, if you commit to yourself that, hey, this is something I really want to do. I want to be a musician. You're going to make the time. And if you're unwilling to make the time, just realize you're not going to get very far. And that's fine if all you want to do is be able to play, you know, CGA chords all day so you can play Kumbaya and the simplest country music along to the campfire. And that's fine. If that's what you're interested in, go ahead and buy a $5,000 guitar. You know what I mean? Put it in your, your fancy vehicle so that you can look like you're a musician to try to be impressive. I think I'm probably being a little bit odious here because, uh, you can tell that I don't think very highly of people who don't take, you know, being a, a musician very seriously, but or a guitar player. But in all fairness, realize that everybody's a guitar player, yet, in my opinion, the guitar plays the player more than the player plays the guitar in most instances. You know what I mean? So how can you say you're a guitar player when you can't even tune your own damn strings? You know what I mean? Good grief. But that's, that's, that's irrelevant. So if that's as far as you want to go with it, that's fine. If you want to just be able to play the most basic things and you're fine with that, that's fine. But if you want to actually do something with an instrument and get something out of it, uh, other than the, the appearance that you play an instrument, which unfortunately I think is the case for at least half of us, it's going to take some work and you're going to have to find time. And the only way you're going to find time is you just got to commit to, my, commit to yourself, hey, before I go to bed each night, I'm going to play for 30 minutes and you've got to stick to it. Like, hey, every day that ends in a Y, I'm going to play until I get to a certain point. Because once you learn how to play an instrument, it's really like riding a bike. I don't have to practice every day or every week even, or even every month for that matter, to, to be able to pick up where I left off. Now, don't get me wrong. I might be a little rusty. I might have to shake out the gremlins a little bit. I might not be, have as much stamina as if I would have played every single day. But who cares? It's hard enough for me just to carve out 30 minutes to play. So the point is, you have to make a commitment to yourself and tell those around you, look, I'm playing my guitar or I'm playing my instrument, my piano, my saxophone, whatever, and I'm going to do it. You need to buzz off because I'm doing this for me. All right. This is for me. All right. And so you have to be a little bit selfish, I think, to be a musician because at the end of the day, you can say, oh, I, I just, I just really want to be able to give people my art, and you know, I think people really need. Nobody really wants your art. People, if they want it, they'll find it, they'll get it, they'll choose to like it. Sure, there's some advertisement promotion that goes within it, but the, your art you do for yourself. You get it. And this is something you do for yourself, 100. percent And there's nothing wrong with it. I think people have this impression, this impression that you know, it's wrong to be selfish in certain things, and. There are times when that is true, but there's there's a certain there's a difference between being selfless and selfish, and making time to do something that's for your own good. And playing a, an instrument really does open up your mind, keep you creative. It, and once you get to a certain point after you've been playing for a few years, it is just therapy that nobody, nothing else can provide. And so I think uh, you know somebody who who really gets in tune with their mind, body, and soul and plays an instrument, I think that they have a better life. So if there's any reason to want to play an instrument, it's so that you can live better. Just like the same way why, you, why people should eat healthy. It's so that they feel better and live better, live longer, right? Uh, you know, maybe it's genetics, but you know, I'm not exactly spring chicken anymore, but you know what? I don't have gray hairs. Maybe my hair lines receding a little bit, but you know, I still look fairly young, and it's not because I've always eat, ate healthy my whole life or because I've always, uh, I've got the best genetics, anything like that, or I've always been in great shape. But in my opinion, it's because I've lived the lifestyle of a musician. I've stayed young at heart. 
And I think that's something that I'll, you'll notice with musicians. They tend to be people who are very young at heart because music has this just crazy ability to keep you young. It has an ability to make you kind of focus on what's really important. And that, you know, things that seem big are actually very small, right? And it's just very, very strange how uh, oftentimes musicians and artists look at the world a little bit differently. Now, there's clearly spazzes who are musicians and artists all over the place, but I tell you what, if you think they're a spaz now, take their art away and see and try living with them then, right? So don't worry about trying to be selfish because this, in my opinion, being a musician can make you a better or more round, more complete person. If you were to tell me I could never play music again, um, obviously I'd live my life and do my best, but I don't think I'd be living a full life. Just like I feel like if I were to stop eating well or eating healthy and, and to not exercise anymore, that, yeah, sure, I, then I could spend more time with my family, you know? Hey, if I wasn't spending as much time cooking or as much, or an hour, 45 minutes to an hour every morning before they're awake, you know, working out, then yeah, I'd have more time with my family. Sure, in the short term, but it wouldn't be quite as quality of time. I wouldn't probably live as long. And at the same time, like, who am I? I'm really not benefiting anybody by by being quote unquote selfless so what i'm saying is if you want to be a musician you need to be a little bit selfish and you need to devote the time and more importantly make the time for yourself but realize that you're doing this for yourself and that there is nothing wrong with this all right it's a great hobby obviously you still have to go to work you still have to raise your family but there is nothing wrong with saying hey i'm going to take out an hour out of every week or 30 minutes every other day, and I'm going to play an instrument, I'm going to learn something, and I'm going to be a good example to myself and to those around me of what you can do when you practice and work hard at something. You know, people, we do it all the time with other things. Why not do it with music? But I'm willing to bet that if you are passionate about, hey, you want to, you want to be a musician, you want to learn how to play an instrument, and you want to dedicate yourself and your life to something, you will get more out of it than you can ever possibly put in. Uh, which is kind of why, you know, I'm doing this podcast, why I'm doing a lot of this stuff, because I don't think enough people really realize how much you get out of this. And the more I've learned, the more I realize, the more I want to give back, because not to say that my, um, <laughs> yeah, if you listen to my music, it will change your life. That's not true. But I feel like I've kind of gotten to a certain point uh, in my musical career, or if I can dare call it that, where I, I think I get it. You know what I mean? Not to say I've hit nirvana or I'm totally enlightened, but I'm at a point where I'm not worried about the trivial stuff. That doesn't get to me. I'm perfectly aware that I'm not going to be the best. I'm happy with that. I'm happy to just go and play some of the same songs I've been playing for the last several years. But the point is, I get to make music whenever I want to. Whatever I feel like playing, I can play. If there's something I want to learn, I can do it. If I want to challenge my mind, body, and soul, I can do it. And more importantly, if I want to be able to express myself in a way that words cannot ever possibly do, anger, emotions, happiness, sadness, those are, those are words to describe feelings, right? But there are certain emotions you get from playing an instrument that there are not words for. And if you want to experience that, go get yourself an instrument and keep playing for years and years. And don't do it for anyone else. Do it for yourself. Because it is a truly a wonderful journey. It's a painful journey. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot out of you. But man, everything it takes from you, you get received back tenfold. All right, guys. I think I'm going to stop there. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and I hope to catch you all next time. And keep hungry and keep playing your instruments. If you'd like to learn how to play an instrument, Get on the freaking internet or YouTube. They're like, everybody will show you how to do it for free. And if that's not good enough, go hire somebody to help teach you. But realize, nobody can teach you how to play. You can only learn. And there's only one way to learn. Keep trying. Keep failing. And keep failing until you fail less and less until you succeed. All right. Y'all have a great one. Bye-bye. <laughs>